Yeah, October, November 2015, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Again, multiple choice out of 70. Yeah. Question one is theory. Okay, which one of the following is incorrect? An annuity stream is equal to the annual cash flows. I would say that is correct. Okay, I think maybe, Jeb, just to also yeah. help you a bit as well, um, how about yeah. we use these multiple choice questions as a bit of like a mock exam, but for multiple okay. choice? Yeah. How's that? Okay. Okay, so yeah, cool. um, I, I don't want to guide you too much because I'd, I'd no, rather no, no, think about it um, and then we decide yeah. what is right, okay? Okay, so you, you go That's for it, you tell me yeah. what you think yeah. is correct and then we'll mark it. Cool. Okay, it's definitely option four because there's no outflows in a conventional, in a conventional thing, and all the rest. An annuity stream is equal to annual cash flows. Um, the mutually exclusive projects, uh, mutually. Yeah, cool. Um, the cash flow. Okay, I'm not 100% sure about this one, but um, I'm going to go, we'll be evaluated on an after-tax basis. Okay, so remember when we looked at new and old? Yeah. When do we have old? Only when we have a replacement. If it's expansion, yeah. what happens to the old? If it's an expansion, if it's an expansion... It's zero. Okay. Because it doesn't affect the decision-making. Okay. Okay. There's actually a note that I want to just refer to quickly um, um, in, in, I think this was okay. the first set of notes here. Um, if you look at one of the slides for the expansion versus replacement, um, just remember yeah. always that if you're expanding, do you agree you're yeah. buying a new asset? There's going to be yeah. no consideration for the old asset because the old asset doesn't affect the decision making of the new assets. 100%. But if I'm replacing, it does. That's why in a replacement, you have oh, to take okay, it yeah, into yeah, yeah, no, no. Actually, don't worry, Anthony. I mean, I just, I just misread that. I was, I was thinking that it was referring to the cash flows, because if you're expanding, I mean, if, if you're expanding effectively, the old, the old machine should still have in, should still have inflows, because it's still there. You haven't sold the assets. Um, it doesn't. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's not being replaced by something else. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so the, yeah, I yeah. So, say, so I think, yeah. yeah, I think that's where I think that's where I went. That's where I went through the project. The cash flow from the old asset. I, I was thinking about the 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 operating cash flow, not the cash flow. Okay. As in, like the terminal cash flow. Okay. So but yeah, no, just I, I, that I, if we're looking understand, at understand, with yeah, expansion, understand, you understand where that's coming from. The old. Yeah, no, hundred percent. But I mean, if it's separate. but if it spoke about, I mean, because just so I mean, in, in an expansion decision, it, it means that that what's happening with the old machine will continue to happen. You're putting in a new machine so that you can increase capacity. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So I mean, that, where I just got confused with that, and I mean, it was just me not reading the question properly. Was just that. Um, I was thinking that it was talking about operating cash flows oh. on the old machine. Okay. Um, whereas, whereas, yeah. So, I mean, if I'd have thought there was a cash flow from the old asset, obviously you're not doing anything with the old asset, so that would be zero. So, I, I do understand that. Okay. So, number three. Um. The net income after taxes. So I would say that's 350 plus the 15, so 365. Nice. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> okay, so let's take that. 
Also wir können Cashflow. I would say thirteen five hundred. Good. Terminal cash flow because, is option two. Good. Yeah, yeah. Because the terminal, because you wouldn't, there's no tax on the working capital. Why? And um, because it's not actually something, it's not actually sold, and it's not profit. Oh yeah. Okay. The it's, working capital. Yeah. Fair enough. The working. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's no, there's no tax because it was sold for book value. So yes. It, it was worth ten thousand, and it was sold for ten thousand. Sure. Okay. That was option two, right? Yeah. Cool. The advantage the SIM card over is the I would say number one for this. Okay, so if I'm looking at an advantage of IRR, yeah. okay, do you agree yeah. IRR, we, we said previously in um, one of the nights... <coughs> MPV, that, yeah, MPV is is preferable because it's actually giving you what the, the net present value is, whereas IRR just gives you a, a rate of return. And I, know, I remember reading in the thing, so that is superior when dealing with mutual excuse of projects, but um, I remember also in the, in the textbooks, finance managers tend to prefer it because it seems to be easier because you're looking at a percentage, not a value. Uh, Whereas yeah, with true. the MPV, so that's fine. All of yeah. that you said is correct, but um, just yeah. remember here they said IRR over NPV. So why yeah. is IRR better than NPV? Well, it's precise in terms of the uh, precise cost of capital is not needed to calculate the Internal rate of return. Okay. okay, so you don't okay. need the cost of capital. Okay, whereas NPV, okay. do you need a cost? So how do you calculate IRR? IRR, um, it's actually a reiterative process. So if you wanted to do it manually, um, there's a, um, oh, a yes, system okay, I remember that. Yeah. method. Yes, okay, I do remember that now. Yeah, That's why they don't do actually test it. Unless it's, you've covered yeah. advanced mathematics. Okay, cool. Okay, so okay, it would be possible for a student um, covering <coughs> Fin 3701 to do it. Yeah. You'd have to use the calculator yeah. to work out IR. Okay, cool. And how do you do it on the cal? Oh, man, that how do you do it on the cal? I remember, yeah, we, we did this in two. You insert the CFs and then you yeah, press and then IR you, and then of NPV. And, okay. Okay, cool. And then that, on if there is that a was. That was the one where that, that that was a calculation where you could have like a couple of different. It gave you a couple of different things because which one? Remember, there was the one calculation you did. Um, oh no, that that was amortization. That was amortization, where you had the different. You had the three different options of it when you pressed amort. Uh, oh yeah, well that was balance, interest. And yeah, 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 but yeah, That's yeah, that different. was so that was amort yeah, that was amortization. Um, you're actually you don't have to worry about amortization. I, I, I've yeah. never seen it come up here other than in leasing. Yeah. In a no, lease, look, I, you no, might have to use amortization to get the actual um costs. Yeah. Look, no, I mean, I, I just, I was just thinking, I just, no, I got a little bit confused there. But Debbie is evaluating the viability of an investment. The firm should make the investment if the. Is greater than zero. No, if the MPV is greater than zero. Definitely. Yeah. So option four. Okay. Um, I would go with number four. Uh, okay, so this is looking at replacement, eh? That's important. Yeah, yeah. So because it's saying there, um, well, no, no, no. Okay, cash flows. 
I was just thinking because on because on the thing you don't have to calculate. Oh, I suppose you have to do the initial investment calculation anyway. Yeah, but this is looking at the cash flows, so that will be yeah new minus old conventional, the can the the new minus old. Which is so would that be incremental cash flows? Okay. Okay, incremental just means um, the additional benefit in that that we're going to be deriving. Here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the so the incremental is, is when you so incremental is where you con comparing the new with the old, and that basically. Because the old is your operating cost. Yeah, it's also called like a relevant cost. Um, so the textbook talks yeah, about okay. relevant. Incremental is just looking at two different costs, new yeah. and old together, old, which gives yeah, you a yeah. relevant cost. Yeah, but but the old cost you you put that in because the old cost is considered an opportunity cost. So you yes. you well, put it's that in. That you lose out on, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. So it's the opportunity cost that you would have. It's the best other cost that you could have had, or the best other use of that of that money. Would be the well, old, basically. you're taking okay. that cool, now I've got consideration that. in the decision making of the new because it's replacing the old. Okay, cool. Just consider investing the future. Um. Okay, so break even cash inflow. I'm not, I don't understand what they're asking you. Okay, so what did they say? Well, you've got I. Uh, I2 Limited is considering investing in a fleet of buses, okay, requiring an initial investment. Initial investment means what? PV. Okay, yeah. Okay, they yeah. say okay. that the buses will oh, generate so cash inflow of 10. Okay, so okay. that's P, is that PV? So your, your P. Oh, okay, I, I just wasn't honest, I just wasn't sure. I, I thought, like the break even, I was thinking, but don't you need fixed costs and stuff like that for it? So, okay, and, and this, I thought this was like more. It's fixed cost selling price and variable costs. Yeah. Not okay. break even cash flow. So the, break even cash flow means where do I okay, basically so, meet my, um, my, my present value of my future cash flows? Yeah, okay. Your payment, so the payment would be 10,000. Yes. And your N would be five. Okay, so I mean, yeah, it's, it's actually quite simple. I mean, I should have just, let me just calculate it quickly. It was something I should have actually picked up on. This value of 15 is I, is N, 10, is payment, calculate for future value. Are we calculating for future value or present value? Okay, you're looking for break-even cash flow, so you're trying to actually work out what is the payment. Oh, oh, so we're trying to work out what the... Okay, so the future value, which is the future value then? The future value, um, there wouldn't be a future value here. Okay, because so what is the 10,000 so what, what the the 10, then? Like? So what is the 10,000 then? The cash flow. Okay, so where do you put that, where do you put that into the whole thing? Payment. Okay, but if we're calculating for payment. Uh, well, okay, well, okay, so let me rephrase it then. Okay, so okay. payment is what you're calculating. Okay, but remember, yeah. 10,000 is what you're getting currently. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, okay. so if I draw what they've given you, they've yeah. given you this um, for five years. Yeah. And this is obviously capital 15%. Okay, so what they're saying is this project is giving 10,000, okay, for the next five years, and that project costs 30,000 to start. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so now what you're saying is, well, if I've got 30,000 to start, that's basically what yeah. you're saying, break even. Okay. okay, okay so, so having TV. invested 30,000, what must you get here? Okay. As a cash flow to break even. Uh, okay, cool. No, no problem. I know how to work it out now. I was just a little bit confused about 
what the 10 is. Yeah, um, so the 10 is just looking at the current yeah. scenario. It's present value, 15 is I, 5 is N, late for payment. I get an answer of 8949.46. Nice. So it would be option 1. Cool. Okay, you would use cap M, yeah? Definitely. Okay, so R R equals R F or uh, yeah. Yeah, so R equals R F plus beta times by the market returns minus the risk free rate, which gives you so your risk free. This is very similar to the one we had to do in the other exam. Uh, it's actually pretty much. It's, 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 it's actually it's, it's the one we it's the one we did just before. It's exactly the same question. Okay. They've just changed the name of they've just changed the name of it. Oh. Um, I think it's eight point comes to eight point three percent. Yeah. So you had to do the cap M and then you had to do the, the present value yes. based on the, the 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 present value being one hundred, the future value being. Nine, ten, and then basically calculate like one year what the what the market return. So you had to basically calculate the market return. It was exactly the same question that was in the May 14 one that we just did. Oh, okay, okay. All they did was they had um, they had ISCO instead of Dalton Limited. Oh, all right. Well, that's that's good that you spotted that. Nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. At least I at least I know I knew exactly what to do with it though. Yes. Okay. Which of the following disadvantage to a company? I would say, well, that's not a disadvantage because it doesn't have that. I would say the number one issue of 100%. ordinary shares at a hard cost. Well done. Price Limited has achieved an EBT of 220. I'm not sure what to do with this. Um, we haven't had something similar to this yet. Okay, so firm value, um, I think we spoke about this like in one of the 2017 yeah. papers. So I'm just going to recap yeah. this. Yeah, but I think, we had to calculate is, the, I think we had to calculate the firm value in that one. Yeah, we still need to do the same thing here. But okay. But we're reversing it. Okay, so net profit yeah. after tax yeah. over the WAC. MPAT over WACC. Okay. All right, then you've got to substitute and solve, and you need to calculate the um, required. Yeah, hold on one second. I just want to make a note of this in my formulas table. Just so that I've got. Because I've just got a whole thing of formulas, which I'm going to just basically. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Um, you yeah, also just want to, just to also like, just to understand. So I'm going to just write like little notes about what to look for, like what the formula, what you need to look for in the formula and stuff sure. like that. Yeah, you know, so for instance, like, yeah, so like, you know, exactly like the ones we did where, where if there's, if there's an issue of new shares, so if there's a flotation cost, then I'll use that formula. If it's yes. got this in the question, then I'll use that. So I'm just going to make little annotations next to them when to use what formula because also with the DOL and stuff um, you know there's the two different formulas for that as well yeah um, so just to just to make a note of you know what is the best opt when is the best option to to use 
this DOL and when is the best option to use that one. Um, just to make it just to make it a bit easier and a bit quicker, so you don't waste a bit of time. Okay, cool. Okay, so we first the first thing we'd have to do is we have to work out the net profit. Definitely. Okay, so we've got the EBIT, but it doesn't look the firm's value is estimated. Okay, so we're actually working out the WAC, I would think as well, because we've been given the firm's value, haven't we? Yeah, you have to solve for the WAC. Yeah, okay, cool. But the first thing we have to find out is we don't have, we've got the EBIT, we don't have the net profit after tax. Um, so we're basically at 220. So you're looking at 68,000 minus. 68,000? No. No, sixty-three thousand. Sorry. Yeah, sixty-three thousand. So you're looking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is is the tax? Yeah, is the tax. So you you're looking at an impact of one fifty-six two hundred. Okay, that's good. So you can put in already one fifty-six two hundred, and you can put the firm value at four hundred. Good. Five one three equals that over WACC. Okay. Now. How do you, I can, this is, how do you move the, I know if it's a minus, if it's like, so if it's a plus on the one side, what do you, do we just times? Yeah, if it's a multiply on the left, you can take it to the yeah. left, it becomes multiply. So, okay. uh, if I add a step here, yeah, it'll be this. Okay, so you just basically replace, you basically just swap the two around, the yes. WAC and the firm value. Multiplying okay. and dividing, yeah. Okay, so that would be WAC equals 156200, right about 400, 513. There's 513, yeah. 513, yeah. 400, 513. Yeah. 200, down about. So you get zero point three eight nine 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 eight. Yes. Or point three nine. Or thirty nine percent I mean. Yes. Yeah. So is that the weighted average cost of capital for that firm? Uh, well that would be the required cost of capital which would be the whack basically because of firm value. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So they should have maybe said whack here instead of firm's required return. It was yeah, yeah. Uh, just problem with the questioning, but it's yeah. fine. You can still get a rate. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, as long as I know when they – so if they mention firm value, then I know I need to use this equation. That's 100%. that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. So, I mean, I'll be able to work it out, whatever's, whatever's missing. Yes. Firms. The firm's brain – I would say the operating break-even point. Definitely. Cool. Twelve is option three. So the, with the financial, the financial break-even point would be after tax. Uh, financial break-even point. Uh, yeah. Well, financial. No, financial. Oh, would with be that. No, that's a tax, total. That would be the cost. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be different. Okay, yeah. so that's a, that's a total break-even point would be after the cost. Well, total would be looking at operating and financial. Look at both. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so it's okay. That so that's the leverage stuff. Stuff. Okay. Cool. Um, so fixed operating cost sales of you per unit. The variable cost. The break-even point in units will be. Okay. So. Break even equals it's the fixed costs over the sales minus variable costs. But you don't have fixed operating costs. You don't have, yes, you do. So it would be 20,000 divided by 5 minus 3 equals. 20,000 divided by 2 equals 
10,000. So your break even units would be 10,000. Correct. Which is option two. Monty's limited prison capital structure comprises a long term loan of 200,000 at 15% per annum and 3,000 ordinary shares. If the firm's tax rate is 40% and the EBIT is 60, the EPS is equal to. Okay. I need to just try and remember. EPS, EPS equals profit minus preference over ordinary. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got, okay, so we, we need to first work out what the, they've got a loan, the prices of the loan structure. Okay, so we need to work out what the interest is at fifth. So it's 30,000 Rand interest. Good. Um, so we've got 60,000 Rand at a tax rate of 40, so that's 24,000. No, so we, we've got 30,000 times by 40, so that's 12, leaves you with 18. So your profit is 18,000 divided by um, 3,000 shares. So it would be 6 Rand. Well done, that was quick. Or 600 cents. Your accounting's very really strong. Yeah, you, you don't know um, how many students struggle with that, eh? Just this bit here, yeah. but you're good at this, so your counting is really good. Yeah, look, I, I try, when I do maths and stuff, I try to do quite a bit of it. I try to do quite a bit of my maths and stuff also. Like, it's only the only type of stuff I really do on a calculator. Like, if it's if it's round numbers, if it's round numbers, like 40%, like, I'm, I'm quite good at yeah. doing that quite easily, sure. like, mentally, instead of having to do it on the calculator, and it's much quicker for me. Because, I mean, it's quite easy. You take 10% of it times about four. Yes. And then now people think that that's quite hard. So when it gets to like the 29% and 28% and stuff, that it becomes, it's much easier, quicker to do it on the calculator than yeah. it is mentally. Okay, 15. So I haven't actually done too badly, yeah? I mean, it was firm value. Firm value, I didn't know. Um, that one I knew. That one I knew. And that one, that one I didn't know. So, I mean, I've only really got, I think, three wrong so far, three or four wrong. 11 out of 14 is a really good sign, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so with capital structures, would maximize shareholder wealth, share price. I'm not sure what you need to work out here. Yeah, this one's quite a tricky one because you have to consider yeah. what's actually going to increase the value of the firm. Do you agree? Yeah. 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 So what I did here was um, I try to work out the earnings because if I get the earnings, yeah. I can then okay. determine how much the company is actually generating in terms of yeah. wealth for shareholders. Okay. Yeah. So, so I worked we, out I earnings we... from the EPS. Okay, so, so you do you just work EPS equals profit over shares. Okay, but now how do you work that back when you've only got a share price? Okay, well, if you've got the share price, what does that mean? That means you know how much the shares cost, but it doesn't tell you any other information like you know around how much equity. Uh, is. Yeah, do you agree? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so do you know how much equity you have currently? Well, 80% would, 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 no, no, you don't, don't. You do, that was correct. Depends on the structure. That was correct. Yeah. So you only, it depends, yeah, it depends on the structure. Yeah, so you've got all of them, you're right. So now you're halfway there. Yeah. So here's your equity, there's your EPS. Can you get the earnings? I don't know. Yes, you can. Right, because if you think course, about yeah. it, um, oh, yes, of course you can. Of course, thing. yes, man. Yes, of course you can, man. Sorry, I've just been. Yeah, no, man. It's actually, it's actually exactly what we did before. It's just you're solving for you're solving for the profit instead of the you're solving for the profit instead of the the earnings per share. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Let me put up the working so you can see it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just, I'm just thinking. I mean, we can possibly cover. We've got ten minutes. I mean, we can possibly get through maybe the other four or five questions. Yeah. So um, there's it. If I don't have to go and work all of this out. Option one, two, and three. You're looking at those yeah. options in terms of the debt ratio. Okay, that was yeah. what I had to solve for. Okay, I had to get the okay. earnings because I was looking at the amount of value being created or the wealth being created. So. Obviously, I could consider firm value, but that's um, that's not really what we're going to be focusing on because yeah. there's no whack in the question. Because you went, but we also don't have net profit anyway. Yes. Yeah, so the only thing that you could possibly use here is the earnings, and then I would go okay. with option four because option four has what the highest amount of debt. So obviously, the most okay. debt that you have in the business. See, it speaks to the theory yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If you increase debt, you increase leverage, you maximize profits. Okay. Okay, so you okay. don't actually have to do workings. You could have just so thought just about the theory. More debt, okay, so more earnings. Okay, more debt. Basically. If more we just earnings. Keep it simple. Okay. Yeah, but I wanted to yeah, show I mean, the cool. working just so you understand yeah, yeah. that the no, earnings no, no, are going Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, it's cool. I'm, I'm glad that you did. It did make me understand it a bit better. Okay. Um, okay, so 16. Capital impairment restriction is established to... I would say number four, but I don't, I don't know. I haven't heard of capital impairment. Yeah, capital impairment is actually an accounting concept where you write down the value of an asset. Okay. So I think it's a little unfair that they've mentioned that. Okay, the, um, the textbook doesn't actually speak specifically about impairments. Okay, the only yeah. time where you'll see impairments is where they talk about cash flows. But yeah, yeah. I, I find it's a, bit, it's, it's a bit of a curveball here um, in yeah. terms of what... The IAS 39 says yeah. about impairment. That's an accounting standard that relates to impairments. Yeah. Um, you could go with option three or four. Both could be right. Okay. So if you went with four, yeah. I would mark it right. Okay. Okay. Uh, a three or both, four is I mean, actually acceptable. Yeah, I see. This is one of those questions. The same as I think it was also the October November one where there were two where there were two answers which could have been right in the question. Possibly, yeah. Well, like I say, your yeah, account okay. is strong. So, I mean, you had four anyway, so it's right. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we're at 12 out of 16. Okay, declared cash dividends of 400,000, which conforms to its payout pollet ratio of 40%. Company's current after-tax earnings equals... Declared 400,000, which includes... Okay, so... Tax earnings equals. I'd say a million. A million? Option four, yes. Good. Yeah. Yeah, just the question, just like you, you look at it and you think it's something really, really confusing. But I mean, if that's 40%, it's got, if, 40, if 400,000 is 40%, yes. uh, it's got to be. Um, right, okay, so option four. 18. The following use Excel Limited to calculate the maximum dividend, maximum dividend per share that the firm can pay. Excel account owner's equity as follows. Ordinary shares, retained earnings, total owner's total equity. A million. available for all the shareholders from this period of Okay, so you would need to look at the cost. You'd need to look at basically, you'd need to basically solve for DRV. Uh, for the I'm, not, I'm actually not sure how to. Per share, yes. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I, so would you use the Gordon Growth method? No, you wouldn't. Okay, how do what, you get I'm DPS? Not sure what to... DPS is a formula. Write down the equation and you can get the answer. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what the equation is for DPS. Okay, 
um, it's the amount that's being paid out. So the payout divided by the number of shares, or the dividends divided by the number of okay. shares. Okay, so dividends divided by number of shares. Div divided by number of shares. Okay, so so what so in this thing, um, what would it what would it be? Well, how are they going to pay out the dividends? So the, the number so so the okay so the number of shares is four hundred thousand. Okay, um, and the operations are, are the shareholder the earnings available to ordinary shareholders are which have been included as part of the one point nine retained earnings. The maximum. So would you just take the the million divided? Or the four hundred thousand divided by the. Okay, it's the maximum. So how much is available? I'm not sure. One point nine. I'm not actually okay. So one point nine is available. Okay. Four hundred thousand shares are going to get a share of one point nine retained earnings. Okay. So what is the formula again, please, Anthony? Dividends over shares. It's a total dividends, eh? Yes, everything total dividends, Over everything. Shares. Okay. And and okay, so in the question, are they paying out one point nine, or are they paying out a million? Well, they're paying out a million, but that's already included okay. as part of one point nine, which is everything that they've got. Yeah. So okay. if it's maximum, maximum means pay out everything that you've got. Okay. So then you do it by the one point nine divided by four hundred. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. Hundred percent. That was a formula I didn't have because we haven't. The, I haven't actually seen that before. Um, okay. Well, I think we, we might. I think we might have done it. We might have done it in two six zero one. Yeah. yeah. Remember, two six zero one um, knowledge must be carried through to three seven zero one. They're not going to yeah. give you the ratios again. You just need to know them. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we haven't had we haven't had any questions around this, so it's quite nice that this actually came up. Yeah, because it's, it's just nice to. Okay, dividend policy is a form of. Working capital policy. Yeah. No, no, no. No, no, not working, yeah, yeah. Cap working yeah. capital. No. The capital, capital, capital budgeting policy. Yes. That's better. Okay, good. Yeah. And now I said, I said as soon as I said it didn't sound right. Okay. As soon as we're dealing with capital budgeting, I'm pretty sure it must be. Yeah, even in the textbook, Should dividend policies one. covered under the capital budgeting chapter. Okay. Um, advantages of leasing from the lessee's perspective include all of the following except the first one. No, no, no. That that one is an advantage. High cost, especially, may provide the firm with the financing flex. It's the bottom one is an advantage. It's the second one. Which are all advantages? Are they all advantages? Advantages, yeah. So we're no. choosing the one that's a disadvantage. That's not done. No. So isn't two a disadvantage? Lessee's perspective. Uh, this was the advantage. Yeah, this is a repeat question, hey? Yeah, yeah. So it's number two, I think. It's exactly the same as the last one. Uh, was it, hey? Can you check it quickly? Yeah, it's exactly the same as the 2014 one. It was exactly the same as the question we just did, and actually, yeah, it was exactly the same. Was it? I okay, think we did have choose. it as number. Um, just hold on a second. I'm just going to go and check it. Um, well, that's what that's what you came up. That's what you said it was. I said it was something else. Let me just check. It's no, it's exactly the same question. Eh? Exactly, because I, okay. I remember the the leasing were the the first and the last one were definitely in the book. The lessee who leases land is permitted to deduct the total lease payments as an expense, which was right. So we did come up with option two. Yeah, we went with option two for 2014. Two. I can't remember yeah. now, but um, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's exactly I, the same. It is exactly the same, yes. Okay, yeah. in this memo, I see I had it as four, which is actually incorrect. Yeah, because that we actually saw that in the textbook when we looked at it. Yeah, so I'm just gonna put a note here, see textbook, yeah. so I just wanna correct this one. Yeah, yeah, so we actually, we actually put this into the tech, yeah, because we actually, remember when we did that, that other one where it yes. had the, where they had the, you can Yeah, now you I remember, I remember now because you've gone through it Yeah, you can depreciate the, this. yeah. So I remember that the, it had, the other one that had this 100%, which was correct. And then it also had the, and then it also had the the other one, which was, no, well, I mean, this, this it, it had that one where, where you could depreciate, you were able to depreciate land that you owned. But I mean, like you said, you can't depreciate land, first of all. Yeah. And second of all, why are you not leasing it if you own it? Yeah, that was the one debate, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, even if I go to page six six four, it says leasing provides hundred percent financing. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you're you're definitely right. Yeah. Page six six four. I'm just gonna add that here. Okay. So yeah, there was a mistake in this memo then. Well, yeah. in, in, in my answers, just correct this, obviously. It was option yeah, cool. two, not four. Okay, there was a mistake. Awesome, Anthony, thanks. I mean, I think we leave it there because, I mean, it's pretty much half past eight. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, we finished all the multiple choice, which is quite good. So, and that took, what, 42 I mean, minutes? I mean, we're on the call for 42 minutes, and that's how much time you would have in the exam to do it. So that's yeah. brilliant timing. Yeah.